Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Geardy from Matty G Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community, 18 Kent Street West in downtown Lindsay. All right, Matt, you are completely unprepared as per usual for this topic. Uh, but I, it's been on my mind if for the last few days. We've talked about it a little bit in a roundabout way. Uh, but I want to talk about being cool <laughs> and how, you know, being cool is part of being a business owner. It's like, hey, I want to be cool. I want to be a business owner. And there's, you know, I don't want to bash on everyone doing things just to show everyone how cool they are. But I think a lot of businesses fail and get off track because they want to be cool. And they want to be like something else. Mm. And it's been on my mind thinking about business models. Uh, so specifically, we had uh, a conversation the other day about a business model that you uh, talk about, and I think I've mentioned on the podcast before, about, you know, you just want to do nice things for your spouse on her birthday, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. And if you could just have a subscription that took care of that, you would do it. And when you wonder why don't those things exist, I think when people start a business like that, suddenly they want to like be really cool by scaling it huge. And then they, uh, they'll they scale it and they'll be like, oh, we should be cool like this other business and we'll send it monthly instead of just the times when you want it. And then they'll be like, oh, well, it'd be really cool if we partnered with these you know cool celebrity brands or something like that and then they start maybe giving those things which maybe that person doesn't want and you just you get slowly off track and away from what the customer wants and then the business fails because you're trying to be cool Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of other businesses just they grow too fast sometimes and they keep following these things to be cool and then they crash and burn Yeah, I don't know. I think I have talked about that subscription idea on this podcast. I've got a few ideas that I've never mentioned out loud because I maybe want to do them one day. Uh, That one, do I want to do it? I don't know. I don't think you're the one to do it, but you want to be a customer. I want it to exist so badly (laughs) because every year, Valentine's Day, whatever, I want to do something nice for my wife. And I'm too lazy or I'll make an excuse or whatever. I would love to just, the beginning of the year, I'm going to outline the business plan so someone can do it for us. Uh, At the beginning of the year, I paid whatever the tier is. The minimum tier would be birthday, anniversary, maybe Valentine's Day, right? And then tier two would be pick X amount more. Mother's Day, Easter, Christmas, whatever. Two random surprises that you don't even know when they're showing up. So every year I know I'm getting that subscription box. Now, is it flowers? Is it a box of stuff in it? Is it just one thing? I don't know. Yeah, there's probably like a, here's 10 things, select the four things that they like the best. I'm surprised this doesn't exist, and maybe it does. But like, subscription box exists. They're fun and trendy. But like, who needs a new pair of socks every month? Who needs a new cartoon t-shirt every month? I don't need that, but I need a problem fixed once or a handful of times a year without... And that's yeah. where I think being cool of like, hey, we want to do this monthly. That's really cool. Versus maybe quarterly is going to get you more sales because people you know, resonate with the cool t-shirt or the cool thing. Uh, and people get away from what their customer really wants. Uh, I find this in the entrepreneurial community um, and sorry, the academic community as well because when you start getting a business idea, everyone wants to give you their idea and their two cents mm-hmm. into it. And it can distract you from that core purpose of what you're doing because you want to be the, you know, the... Um, razor blade and and blade model or you want to follow like the McDonald's model Um, I remember distinctly a entrepreneur whose business has failed 
and a professor had told him how he was going to be like the McDonald's of something. And I remember at that moment, like, biting my tongue because I was like, you need to focus on actually creating your business and selling something before you start thinking about how you're going to be like the McDonald's of this industry. And it, it can distract you, but you feel so cool because you're like, oh, I have this idea and like this is what my business could be. And then you, and, and that's fun to do and you need to do some big vision stuff sometimes, but it's the jumping around to try to be like something else that doesn't fit with what you're doing that gets in your way. And not actually just trying to solve a problem, which is the reason why we should be doing every single business. Every single business is trying to solve a problem. And, and staying focused. I heard a podcast, it was the Deep Work podcast the other day, it was talking about being obsessed with a problem. Mm. And I forget this guy's name, but he was an early employee at Facebook. Mm. And he talked about how he had all these ideas for how to monetize. And he said, Mark... Uh, Zuckerberg would put up one billion on a board and be like, we want one billion users. That was their entire focus. And then on the podcast, someone was making fun. They're always making fun of selling Mm t-shirts. So they're like, oh, I can see you pitching Mark. Like, hey, we have 100,000 users. If we sell them t-shirts, we can maybe sell 1,000 t-shirts. Like, let's do that. And it was a good analogy of you could get distracted now trying to be the t-shirt selling company when really they were trying to be the get one billion users and then revenue generating is going to be easier. Mm -hmm. And they showed that it is and they're making money off of everyone's paying for Facebook ads now and they didn't before. Yeah, and I think this is interesting because I think I've rejected being cool a lot from a marketing perspective and just the way I've done marketing. And I'm pretty comfortable now saying I am a boring marketer for a lot of different reasons and that's a different conversation as well. But I think when it's st- like I started five years ago, everyone was calling and asking about social media. And now I'm thinking like that doesn't happen a lot anymore. And a couple of years ago, everyone I was working with was asking me about TikTok. That doesn't really happen anymore. And not to say I rejected social media, and not to say that I rejected TikTok, but I was always pushing, not pushing, I was always suggesting more than social media. There's other things that make more sense for you and your business. And TikTok to me also at the time, I was like, yeah, it's the cool, fun thing to do, but I don't think that you understand what's going to have to go into this strategically and then filming it and then editing it and like from an agency perspective it's not cheap which scared everybody away the beauty of this is sidetracked of really cool tiktok and i love where i haven't been on tiktok in a while but some of my favorite people every now and then they'll turn around their camera and there'll be like eight people standing there and it's like you think it's just two people on the couch having a you know whatever but really they did 50 takes and there's all these people there helping out to create the really good Mm -hmm. stuff that goes viral. Uh, But that's the same, like, when people just jump in, like, oh, let's be cool on TikTok without doing all the other marketing stuff. And, and yeah, having TikTok or social or certain things might be something you use to leverage all the boring stuff that you've done. But it's just understanding the basics of what you're doing and why you're doing. Yeah, TikTok is cool, but have you ever been found online when someone's actively looking for a solution to their problem? And does it fit with your business? Because TikTok is, uh, I remember hearing this, more younger people in a certain demographic, they search on TikTok more than Google. And I remember that surprised me. And then I asked some of my students and they were like, oh yeah, we just search on TikTok. Like they Mm -hmm. didn't go to Google. But unless your business is serving that demographic mm-hmm. um, who are searching for it, and then you're going to optimize and do what you need to do to be found, which, again, most people aren't going to put the effort into it or you know, get found in other places first. I actually wonder, 
I have my brain's going in a different direction a little bit with questions, but I wonder how many of those people were searching on Google and now we're searching on TikTok or was it was searching on YouTube and then going to TikTok? Meaning I don't think that that actually is going to affect Google numbers. It's actually going to affect the YouTube numbers because mm. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world because it's Google and then after Google, it's actually YouTube because people are going to that and searching for things. And I'm wondering if those people that are searching on YouTube are now just turning to TikTok. Yeah, it's really interesting to think about and again going through this thought process versus just jumping to try to be cool mm -hmm. is I think one of the key um, just things you have to watch for mm -hmm. in business um, I think of it as um, kind of the business model you know people will want a certain business model that doesn't necessarily fit what they're doing mm -hmm. or I see it in coaching all the time where everybody wants the really cool, elaborate uh, funnels and content, and they want thousands of leads coming in and getting filtered out, and uh, they want this elaborate system that doesn't fit where they are now. And part of it is, I think, the identity of being cool. They want to be like an Amy Porterfield or one of the big... Tony Robbins mm. and it's like you don't realize they've spent decades sometimes building their business to a point where they have these elaborate automations and you don't need those yet and you're trying to be cool to have them and then it doesn't actually work for you and then you get discouraged and close your business and you're like well it didn't work when the heart of what you solve is needed and you just need to find people another way. Yeah, and they're, they're thinking about the cool thing and not the stuff that's actually going to get them business, the foundational stuff. And I'll have this conversation a lot with people that I just had one a couple months ago at Monday Morning Coffee when someone was talking about um, funnels and automation and workflow. And I'm like, bro, you don't even have a website right now. Like, yeah. You need to get a website up. You need to get a business card designed and out there. We don't need to worry about what your automation workflows are going to be. Um, you might have 10 people on your website in the first month. Yeah. <laughs> like, not even. <laughs> so, like, stop being trying to be so cool and start thinking about, like, what actually makes sense. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, it's helped me think about, okay, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. and, and there is a reward of, like, yeah, we want to be cool. We want to adopt a certain identity. But it's we don't want to do that at the expense of growth. Too much, or we don't want to hurt ourselves. Um, I've seen it with I used to call it, you know, guys with a truck, right? They get their business, and then they want like the big truck. And trucks now, I used to say, oh, they want the sixty thousand dollar truck. Now trucks are like people are spending over a hundred grand on a truck. Thanks, Trudeau. Yeah, that doesn't even add value to their business, but they want to be cool and drive around in like the really cool, awesome truck. And that's, again, you're being cool fast versus building your, your business. Being cool fast. <laughs> be cool fast. And then they're like, oh, sorry, Matt, I can't afford marketing yeah. because I have to pay for, you know, these other, other things, right? And it, it, it frustrates it, it, me. Um, but also, it's an opportunity to find out what people value mm -hmm. so you can build your business around that. I will never forget someone was talking to me about, I want to say social media posts. And they were like, well, I'm deciding between this or if I should wrap my vehicle. And I was like, if you're deciding between those two things, we're not going to have this conversation in a yeah. year. And honestly, I don't think that their business is around anymore. I've not, I haven't seen them in yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh funny how that works now this is a fun question do you think that you the running joke that matt doesn't work on fridays is you being cool um do i think it's cool that i don't work on fridays my i always i'm always embarrassed when i tell people uh i'm always i don't know if i'm ashamed you probably hear it more than other people because we're around each other so much I'm usually ashamed or embarrassed because it, I think that it looks like I'm not working enough. I'm kind of coming, trying to come to terms with that on my own. 
Um, but I think that's probably like a counseling conversation, <laughs> well, <hang on. laughs> which I have worked on. Um, but do I think that it's cool? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that I don't know what I think of it. Yeah, I don't think I asked this question on purpose. Yeah, I kind of knew what the answer would be. Uh, and it is a joke, and I think you should. Um, well, not that I want to bring the should monster out here, but you don't need to be embarrassed or coy mm-hmm. about it. I, and I don't think you do it because you're like, oh, I'm cool. I golf every Friday because I'm a business owner and I'm the, the coolest. Uh, I think it's an example, though, of if that's what you want as the identity or how you want to structure your life, now you have to do the hard work of designing your business around that. Mm-hmm. And you have and continue to do that work mm-hmm. where, and your whole brand is becoming that, where it's scheduled intentional activities mm-hmm. and you put in the work to live scheduled intentional activities, which includes building your business so that you can golf Fridays or in the summer spend time with your kids. Like, I think that's an example of you know, how you can still follow these things that we want in our business to be like, but it's putting it in the work and making sure it fits mm. with what you're doing and you're, like, delivering a master class on how you build a brand around that. Because if you're scheduled activities, you could take Fridays off. If you were guy you phone whenever you're needed and I'm going to jump and do it right away, then you probably can't. I just remember working at agencies and seeing the the email or the call come in where you have to drop everything and and run around like a chicken with its head cut off. And I just never understood it. Like, we're in marketing. We're not a, we're not doctors. We're not lawyers. We're not people that have legitimate emergencies. And to me, um, I just don't understand why it had to be that way. And I think when I started my business and like I think most business owners should be thinking about why they're starting a business and a lot of it should be around like it's a certain lifestyle that they want to lead and I think there's always a part of me that um, it's not about being cool Um, I think it's a bit trying to lead maybe subconsciously of showing like you can do this it doesn't have to be this way I don't think I'm rebellious. I don't, I don't have a problem with authority. I don't have a problem with anything like that. I've never been like a really rebellious person. But the idea of I don't like how we as people have just accepted so much that we thought had to be a certain way for a lot of different things. And this is my opportunity to change that, at least personally and professionally. I'm not going to change the world, but if I don't want to work Fridays, I'm going to work on not working Fridays. It doesn't need to be that big of a deal. Yeah. The whole fort, like, the thing that drives me nuts right now is people are coming out like, studies and they're testing the four-day work week and it's like, just do it. And there's a business out, there's other biz- lots of businesses, ones that I've made fun of with you about, like, they talked about it as a point of pride. Oh, we do a four-day work week, and look how high and mighty we are. I'm like, just shut up. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> not an exciting, like, especially the way that they're framing it and they're marketing it. Like, you can yeah. utilize that to your advantage. You can sit down and say, like, hey, we do a four-day work week, and that just shows how well organized and how structured we are. Do you not want to be a part of someone that's going to be a well-oiled machine? Yeah. But no one talks that way. They talk We do a four-day work week. Look how great we are. We're the coolest. Look how great we are. Look how great we treat our people. Aren't we awesome? Don't we deserve praise? And to me, that's what's driving me nuts about this whole four-day work week. I haven't gotten fired up like this on the podcast in a long time, so thank you. (laughs) It's it's really good to get fired up on these things. I heard a a couple of things, and one was on email, when people jump to the email. Wow. Someone was saying, you know, that person who sent you that email, they do not want a response right away. So if you're like, hey, I, um, 
you know, you're getting worried because you have to run around and respond right away. They probably don't even want a response right away because they're also crazy busy. And mm -hmm. the last thing they want to do is that. So maybe they want you to reply within a few days. Mm -hmm. um, I've had that a bit where people be like, oh, sorry for my late reply. I'm like, it was an hour. Like, I wanted to know this like, by the end of the week. Yeah. And I, I think as you develop relationships, it's figuring out what that cadence is and like how often you actually interact. And you're, again, you do a good job of that. Of like, here's when we're going to talk. Here's when we're not going to talk. I'm going to send you this. And if you don't get back to me, it goes by this date. Yeah. Like those are uh, the ways to structure your business around kind of what you want versus, you know, I think people who are, they try so hard to be cool mm -hmm. for like the thing they want that they ignore, um, you know, the customer or what they're actually trying to deliver on. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. There's something funny I want to say, but I'm trying not to say it. <laughs> say it. Who was the cool guy that sparked this conversation? I know who it is. I figured it out a couple minutes into your introduction. but Oh, it was, uh, a, it was a couple of different things. Um, and I think about it in general, and even so many bigger businesses or like famous mm. businesses where they just can't help themselves by trying to copy another business model. Or people who, um, you know, you look at the celebrity business leaders and they're like, oh, I want to be like Gary Vee or I want to be like Elon Musk. And instead of just being like you and creating your business for your life and focusing on the problem you solve for the customers and adapting around that, they like jump too hard to like try to do something else. Um, and I, I, I could come up with... We'll, we'll hit the stop button and then we'll just brainstorm ideas of <laughs> all the you know, businesses or people we know who jump around faster are just trying to be like someone else. And again, it's fun to be cool and be like, hey, I want to be guy who golfs Fridays. How do I make my business work that way? But when it's like, well, I'm going to change my business and maybe lose some customers so I can, mm -hmm. you know, do this mm -hmm. thing, right? Uh, so you just have to work through those things. One as a checkpoint. One day, whenever we have our final podcast, can we name names? That'd That's a good idea. One. We should put that on our notes. Whatever our last <laughs> podcast is, it's just... Name names. Eric of the Grievances. Just go Eric of the Grievances will be like years of like, here's what I wish I said. Or here's who we were talking about yeah. here. Um, It'd be Ian McKee over and yeah. over and over again. <laughs> you should just do a uh, troll Ian McKee podcast. Do you think that would be a good episode? <laughs> we could do our plumber friend too. He listens to us often. But every time I'm in his truck... I can see it. it's always like a little bit embarrassing, but I can see like he's just listening to it. Does he do that just uh, for you? Maybe I don't know. Actually, no, 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 because he's got another friend of our podcast that's always there too. Like he's listening to like yeah. the local podcast. So, anyways, it would be fun to just do pure trolling <laughs> yeah. episodes that are specific to uh, certain listeners. So, yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Let's be cool fast. Yeah. And that is our show. Matt, how do the people find you and what do you want them to know? Go to mattygdigital.com and book a call. Awesome. And I'm Brian and you can get me at profitcoach.ca. And if you want to be on the podcast, you can reach out to us at setitup at Podcast.ca.